of the day, the NCAA has approved voluntary workouts starting June 1st. So kids can go back to their athletic departments, start working out there. Now, part of it, this is really smart. If gyms are opening up in different parts of the country, I think it's probably better that they go to their school or their football programs uh, gym and work out there as opposed to just a regular public gym. You got more safety protocols in place at the university than you would anywhere else. Um, Matt said, I love that, the mandatory voluntary workouts. They've called it voluntary workouts. For Chris and I were talking about this before we went on the air. Um, it, it's really funny because it, when is the last time you heard of kids not showing up for summer workouts? You know, they, we talked about it for the last two months, how important it is to get in your summer conditioning. But here's the thing. That cannot be a mandatory thing from the school. So, technically, kids should be able to just skip whatever workouts they want to in the summer and it not be that big of a deal. But, if you do, you probably ain't going to play. Chris, what were, your, uh, what were your thoughts on this opening back up on June 1st? I, mean, I disagree with that. They're not going to play. If Trevor Lawrence said, no, man, I'm not, I'm not coming to this workout. It's, it's not mandatory. I'm not coming. You think he's not going to play? I, I think some kids. If Devavion Clowney said he ain't coming, you're not going to play? You crazy? <laughs> no, you, you, you got a point there. There are some people that would play no matter what. I just want to know what a mandatory workout would look like. What would you take from them? What, uh, you can't find, they don't have contracts. How do you have something be mandatory if there are no contracts? Because their scholarship, while a contract, is not based on performance. I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a valid point. Now, there are mandatory workouts during the season and during fall camp, but that's when classes are going on. No, but even then, how do, what, if, what if somebody didn't do it? What are you going to take from them? What are you going to do? Now, yes, if you're a friend's player, can you lose your scholarship? Sure. If you're a friend's player, can you not get starting point? Yeah. But if you're a great player or you're just the regular starter, maybe not an elite player, but it's a position where you if you, if you help the team win, you're going to play. Uh, let's see. Lane Stapp Gaming said, I get you want players to work out at their facilities, but you never know when a player may have the coronavirus. And you got you got to agree with me on that because whatever you're doing, you never know who has it. True, but they All have... these colleges just won't control of these kids. That's it. Yeah. They yeah. won't control. The reason they spend $60,000 a night for them to stay in a hotel room for home games, talked about a couple of days ago, is, is strictly because of control. Yes. That's it. I want to know where you are, who you're talking to, what you're doing at all hours of all times. Yes. Now, in in some of these bigger college towns, Baton Rouge, Tuscaloosa, et cetera, like the night before a game, it's probably better to go to a hotel, in all mm -hmm. honesty, with the amount of family and whatnot that's coming in, the amount of people that are going to be on campus and whatnot. Uh, it's probably better for the kids to be able to get away from their dorms. But, uh, you know, staying in a hotel... On a Monday night, the game the night before you got a game at Akron on So so we know, have these billion dollar facilities and we don't have anywhere that we could just have these kids stay there. I mean a lot of times I mean they're not building dorms in the football programs. Like But they have sports dorms. The reason they're not building them again is because we already have football dorms. Right, but they but the the way that it was done uh in, in the past twenty years or so. Uh, this has to do with Title IX. This has to do with, uh, it's not equal opportunity. But, like, not just athletes can stay there. So, they have to allow everybody into these dorms. So, it, that's that's why it changes things up. Like, I think it was probably easier back in, you know, 70s, 80s. Uh, once you got into the late 90s, you know, early 2000s, and then it started changing over because all the rules got changed on what you could and could not do for football only, right? Which is crazy because, like, the football building – only football players can go in. Like, those are the only ones allowed in. However, when it comes to living arrangements and whatnot, you can't specify, well, only football players can live here. And even then, a lot of them choose not to do that. So, and you can't really make them choice. live there. that's their choice. And if they're grown up enough to make those decisions, then they can be grown up enough to not get into craziness before a game. Oh, I, I agree with you on that part. I agree with you on that part. Uh, Matt said, when we had voluntary workouts, the coaches had one guy communicate back to the team and then communicate who was there. So, yeah. I, but I think, Matt, I mean, you got to admit, it's a little different for, like, track as opposed to 
football, right? I don't think track coaches are nearly as controlling as football coaches. Like, maybe I'm wrong on that. McKinnon said, uh, with the workouts on June 1st, it would appear they're preparing to start the season on track with the proposed start dates from different conferences. Yeah, they're, they're starting it up August 29th. I mean, the, yeah, they're, I, they're preparing to run. Yes. Uh, ben said, kick them off the team. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. No, not some, a lot of these guys, no. Absolutely. And uh, actually, none of them, I don't think they'll kick them off the team for missing a workout or whatever. Uh, but in, in some of them, I mean, there will be consequences for missing whatever. Uh, just, there, there wouldn't be a single consequence for an elite player. Uh, to miss a, a voluntary workout? Or, well. Or I mean, a mandatory a workout, workout, yes. but No, there wouldn't. No, there wouldn't. Like, man, guys missing team meetings and stuff. You've never heard of guys getting, like, oh, you didn't oh, you get were to start this you game. For the first series. Yes, I've, I've absolutely seen that in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That's right. You're not the starter this week against against North Iowa, okay? You're, you're not. <laughs> We're, we're going to bring yeah. in Kent State. We're going to beat the hell out of them. But you lose the right to be the captain, and you're not going to start. So you're going to sit out the first series. And then you're going to get your ass in there and you go play. Exactly. Then then we're going to get in and we're score four touchdowns, and then you got to sit back on the bench. Uh, Joseph said, schools see Tom Brady out there practicing, and they're going in. It probably has a lot to do with it. Uh, Matt said, if you're top dog, you get to talking to, but if you're fighting for the spot, uh, the coach will go with the people who showed up. Plus, if you don't get your oh, body ready. 100%. We're not, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But my question is, is that doesn't mean mandatory then. If if one guy can miss and others can't, then it's not mandatory. And my thing is, is what do you do if it's mandatory? Uh, Michael said they want to control them and keep them out of trouble. It's the same with the NFL. And the mm, NFL is The different. NFL has zero. They don't even try to control their players. Yeah. I mean, in, in the because, NFL. Because they're adults. They're, they're, you're under, your control is your yeah, contract. You're a professional. Like, the NFL, yeah, you'll get fined if you it's, get it's in trouble. It's tied to your paycheck. It's tied to your livelihood in the NFL. In college, they just want to control people to because they like to tell them what to do. I mean, that's really the only reason why they do 80% of what they do. 100%. Uh, McKinnon, and it's not for the benefit of the kid or the safety of the kid because all these kids aren't assholes no, no it, it has to do with idiots. the program like it, it's it, it's part of uh the building a culture thing that you hear from coaches all the time all that kind of mess right uh mckinnon jumped in on what i was talking about with the dorms uh i believe no more than 60 percent of a dorm complex can hold athletes according to the ncaa now so and that that's not just ncaa that's uh, uh that's across the board just universities across the country um, I just want to know what I, I want to know the purpose of that rule. Um, it was, I, it it's something to do with equal opportunity. Like, they, but, but hang on, if these guys play football and their sport brings in the most amount of money, that they're not equal to the gymnastics. No, they're not equal to the baseball guys. No, I heard uh, just, uh, Bubba Cunningham, not. the uh, the athletic director from North Carolina, was discussing this. Uh, and he was discussing the name, image, likeness stuff, right? And, and he said on the, I think it was the Audible podcast with uh, Bruce Feldman and Stuart Mandel, he said that he was not in favor of the name, image, likeness thing because if you go back and look at the valuation of the scholarships that these players get in football and basketball, men's football, men's basketball, it is astronomical. I mean, it is hundreds of thousands of dollars, the stuff that they get. And he said, I would be more in line with and he said the reason that college football and college basketball is different than the NBA and the NFL is because everybody gets the same thing. Everybody gets the same. You are part of a team. You all get the same stuff. And now we know that that's not entirely true because of all the under-the-table stuff, but he brought this up and said um, it had to do with um, like the, the NCAA football game with EA Sports. Stuff like that, he was totally in favor of. Because then everybody gets their name, image, and likeness, whatever, on the game. They all get paid the same thing for it. And yes, give that money to the kids. I got no problem with that. But when it's when you start trying to build brands and stuff like that, then it becomes an issue. That, that was his whole... Whatever. But what's the issue? Uh, the issue is that the NCAA doesn't want uh, players to unionize to be able to, to better a contract or, or whatever. So... You, you get how it is. I mean, it's, what if, we've talked what about if they didn't unionize? Times. What if what if it was just the only reason they would have to unionize if they if if you just hold them back and yeah. you don't give them stuff? If they can go out and earn their own sc- money with their name, their image, and their likeness, then then what's the issue? 
I would like to know the issue. And that's uh, go listen to the Audible podcast. I'm gonna send it over to you. It was it was a very interesting listen, but. I mean, it was like an hour long conversation, so I, I, mean, I didn't, I didn't listen to every single second of it. But you know, his his thought process was different, and it kind of surprised me. Like it started off with, you know, I'm not a fan of this, and I fully expected that. What I didn't expect was his reasoning behind it, and it it was fairly interesting. I don't know that I necessarily agree with it, but it was at least interesting and informative nonetheless. Uh, Matt said, "18 to 22 year olds that you have to tell not to eat laundry uh, detergent." Uh, ben said they're soft. Uh, Matt said the coaches can affect your draft status. That's true. Um, if you're not showing up for workouts and whatnot, that that can hurt you in the draft. Yeah, but that's your. But, but you that's, that's made your that decision to not show up. I'm not saying that people should not show up for these things. Okay, not saying that. I just don't like the idea that a school that's giving you no con, you have no contract with them whatsoever, can say anything is mandatory. It's yeah. a sport that you're playing for them, and you're making them millions and millions of dollars. Uh, so McKinnon, if you decided McKinnon said, to not show up, yeah. what are they going to do? Uh, Matt said, if you're the top dog, you're the leader. If you're the leader and miss workouts, then the second and third team guys are going to follow their leader. Then the team has no discipline, and you fall apart. Uh, yes, but I just I just want to know how you impose that. I, it's a good question because I don't have a I don't have a good answer. I, and most of these kids wouldn't miss. They want to be there. They want to do this. That's it's okay. It it's just one of those things where it looks like, yes, King, we we will we will show up for these mandatory things and bend the knee. I, the NCAA is given their approval, as if they have anything to approve or not approve. Yeah. If the state of Mississippi says you can come, and Ole Miss wants to have practice, Mississippi State wants to have practice, but the NCAA says, whoa, whoa, we don't want it yet. It's not safe yet. You know what? Blow me. Yeah. 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 I, I can't disagree with that at all. Uh, Matt said, schools are for academics, not sports. You start favoring sports, then people don't come for academics. You lose grants, professors don't come, then no kids come to the school. Um, again, it said, it's, uh, it's all Title IX stuff. Michael said, yeah, schools are absolutely for academics, but those professors know that their salaries come from athletics. 100%. Uh, Matt jumped back. He said the kids can be influenced by unions. Unions have been known to be crooked. Then they take advantage of the kids. And McKinnon closed that out and said, hell, I remember in college athletics briefings, they made a huge deal about if you do get a job at any point while you're a collegiate athlete, that business cannot advertise they hired you because you're an athlete or advertise you in any way relating to athletics. Yeah, this dives into the name, image, likeness thing, which we've been putting on the back burner for a while. We need to get Lynn Simon in here to discuss it now that, you know, some of this stuff has gone through. They're not voting on it for quite some time. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think it's January that they're doing that. Uh, and Matt brought up Mississippi had that graduate Harry Azcrack. <laughs> Tate, Reeves, Tate Reeves was all about him. Who, uh, who ended up signing him? <laughs> if anybody didn't pay attention to that, uh, they snuck a, a fake name on the Mississippi governor that was reading out high school graduates. And... They put the name Harry Azcrack in there. So, yeah. Um, Michael said, you can't enforce mandatory workouts, but these kids are there because they don't miss them. If they did, they wouldn't be at LSU or Bama, et cetera. Yeah, I think that's the truth. I mean, you bring in good character kids, or at least you you try to. Uh, or you bring in the majority of them, and then if you've got a good culture built with some really good kids, then you can take a chance on the kid that signed with Oregon or whatever, right? You can take a, a flyer on some of these talented but troubled kids and you try and get them to fall in line. It's the same thing that the Patriots were doing when they tried to bring in Antonio Brown, right? Same thing they did with Randy Moss, same thing they did with uh, Ocho Cinco, you know, all that kind of mess, right? Chad Johnson, that bunch. It When you've built a good culture... Chad Johnson and Ocho Cinco are the same person. I know, I know. I just, anybody that didn't know Ocho Cinco, I just wanted to... Specify. Is he going by Chad Johnson now? No, I don't. I don't know. It, it's irrelevant. Yeah, it doesn't matter either way. Um, but that, that's that's the point, right? Is once you've built a good enough culture and you've got enough of those kids, that's all that irrelevant. It's all irrelevant. It's the NCAA giving permission, giving yeah. a blessing. Well, it's, it's giving a that blessing. I think is unnecessary. Well, it's it's giving a blessing because they had a moratorium to where nobody was allowed to go work out on campus, like regardless of what the state said, anything like that. Uh, ben said he's. I Johnson. think there are higher officials that should be making those decisions than Mark Emmert. That's oh, that's all. I, I agree. Think. I agree. Uh, and it still comes down to the states as to whether or not you can get in 
Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's why, that's why I find this ridiculous. Yeah. That's why I'm pushing back is, is it's, it's the NCAA. It has nothing to do with the teams and the players and kids not wanting to, to show up for stuff or whatever. It's the NCAA granting us this almighty right because they are the keeper of all rules. They are the keeper of all things that are right. And we should just do what they say is allowed. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, <laughs> Matt said the NCAA said bagels were fine for recruits, but no toppings. That's right. Yeah, they did. They did, they did say that. that. Yeah. They that's, this is the organization we're talking to. Oh, you want cream cheese on that? Fuck yourself. <laughs> I think that's a really good way to close out the show today. Worked out pretty well. Uh, You guys have been fantastic, as always. I've got to go handle solo dad duty. So, we're going to go ahead and cut this one short today. Uh, We do appreciate everybody jumping in. Chris, another fantastic show. This worked out pretty well. We'll talk about Dak Prescott tomorrow just for McKinnon. We'll, uh, We'll discuss the contract stuff that's going on, along with, I'm sure, something else that will break that will be interesting. And, uh... And we'll be here to knock it all back out again. Remember, go check out tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is opening back up. The casinos are rolling again. You can get all the information at tunicatravel.com. You can get all the information on us at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you are subscribed. Share out the show with your buddies. We would definitely appreciate the love there. Uh, You guys in the chat, you're always magnificent. We appreciate you more than you know. As always, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.